best late game if they can. Uh, give him one, which is also why I think they picked him. You know, they have the PL. They did something similar in the majors game number three, sore spot for Alliance fans, but the one where he they picked uh, the PL into the more ended up carrying that game. They qualify for the major for Epicenter. But I like this lineup a lot better because I think that Chen is inherently just In, it's a broken hero, right? Insane hero? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's no there's no way that I can uh, I can't really mince words in that. You saw in Puppy's interview too that he was like, Why is <laughs> why why are these heroes why are they a thing? Oh yeah, he was uh, very adamant about the overpowered nature of these heroes. And and this is this is Puppy what? Because it felt like he was just giving an opportunity for OG to take whatever they wanted. He gave him the Chen, first of all, but he also yeah. gave them the opportunity at any point to take the Troll Magnus combo. If they wanted to have that, OG did not bite. I mean, that's a uh, classic Puppy, right? It's yeah. uh, much to the chagrin of some of his fans. It's like, Puppy, do you really need to... Uh, you don't need to prove anything, man. Just pick up the W, but... <laughs> and if he can beat Chen at this phase, this would be big for them because OG... I mean, no tails, no slouch with his Chen. Yeah. And then this would prove that they can let it out potentially against other teams, which gives them a drafting advantage for the rest of the tournament. Yeah, it's just a little bit scary to do it at like this phase, but they are up a game. Yeah, they're up a game. They can afford uh, a loss here. They want to go to game three to keep things a little bit more hype. They've got, I'd appreciate uh, that. Nisha Morph, who aside from that one misstep against EG of not building the BKB, yep. for the most part has looked straight up broken. And I think they have Potentially, I'm starting to think this hero is broke. Yes. Oh, I'm glad you said it, man. I fully agree. He is sneakily just going up the ladder for me like crazy. I felt like he was broken last match. Yeah, we're talking about Lone Druid, by the way. Yes. Who I, did... too, was talking about that. <laughs> Definitely wasn't talking about Morphling, which you were just referencing about Nisha. No, no, I think that... Uh, I think, think Lone, Lone Druid's Druid... broke? I I'm starting... I already know that Morph's broke. Okay, but... okay, okay. I think that Lone Druid is really moving up there. Because yeah. he doesn't have any terrible matchups. Uh, he farms no matter what. Uh -huh. He's not fun to gank. He takes early tier 1 towers. He's a good team fighter. He hits this mid-game timing, which is really sick. Yeah, I don't think he's like that bad when it comes to team fighting, just because of the Savage Roar that they gave him, combined with the, uh, the other one, the other Roar, when he goes into melee form. Oh. That's no good. And Mars, a hero upon first release, by the way, which was just straight up broken. Yeah. That was the best hero in Dota for a week. Absolutely. And he did receive some nerfs. He received some nerfs to his, uh, the shield wall damage. Uh, he got a damage nerf. And yeah. then maybe something else. Do you think he's actually okay? in an okay place right now because teams are not first picking it anymore. We saw it maybe at the start of the group stage, but not so much anymore. I think he's okay. Uh, I feel like he... I, on first release, you could have a thousand HP and at level seven you were dead. I, yeah. I, I remember I'd play like Quop against it thinking like, oh, I'll just blink out. I'd have strength treads, two nulls, and I would just die before I could get wand off. I was like, that's not what Ice Frog meant for <laughs> this hero to look like. Uh huh. It felt like first release Earth Spirit. I mean, it's always going to look like that. But nowadays, uh, it's just a lot easier to play against the hero. It doesn't feel as broken. You don't just one-shot people. People are a lot smarter now, too. Like, you yeah. stand in the center. You stand near trees. If he pins you to a tree instead of the ulti, it sucks, but you're not dying. Yeah, for sure. It's a big win. So our lanes are going to be set up where we're just going to have Chen trying to bully out this Mars to protect Phantom Lancer's farm. And then our top dual lane is going to be... I feel like I'm casting inside of a jungle right now. Our top lane is going to be the Sand King and Shadow Shaman uh, against the defensive tri-lane of Team Secret. There's your chant, guys. They do it for much longer, though. You know what's funny? I was thinking about other chat wheel chants. I'm mm -hmm. like, what other good ones are there? And I was like, there's that Roshan one. But what team is like, oh, let's use that one. And then the, the, the crowd gets in on it. And you're like, wait, Secret no, no, did it no. at the end. Stop. You, stop. People do it at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what, PSG, what, you won the big team fight or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Teams do it at the end. 
when it's like guaranteed. Yeah. I oh, know. I think the Seb one might be the best. It's easy for everybody to do. And some people are able to uh, prove their their lung capacity a little bit. <laughs> what is? What are they saying? William, what's up? Disappointing right now, dog. <laughs> so draft wise, what are you thinking? Do you uh, do you feel like OG has a draft advantage this time? Because you seem to like it. I mean, they have the Chen, they've got this uh, this troll Phantom Lancer, so they do have like really good late game. I mean, they seem to think that PL is the counter to the morph. Yeah. They've done it multiple times. Uh, they have better engage disengage than they previously did because i felt like their last lineup was very all in it was pretty much there was no easy way do it up guys again no crowds losing pause yeah we're getting back into it soon so i'm sure technical issues are not to come too close soon Spandam Lancer is going to have kind of a tough, uh, like, early to mid game. Because they do have some significant AoE, right? With the Grim Stroke, as well as the, uh, the Mars. Grim Stroke just getting more damage off of the Stroke of Fate. Mars just has some pretty good AoE yeah. with his... They have good AoE game. clear right now. Plus, yeah. uh, when Lone Druid eventually gets Radiance. Yep, you're going to have that constant burn. There is the possibility that if the Grimstroke does get soul bind on the real Phantom Lancer, say, like, we actually get an Aether Lens, we're doing some sort of smoke gank, like, that hard counters Phantom Lancer if you can actually last, uh, like, leash him to somebody. Because then at that point, he can't use both of his big abilities, right? He can't use his Doppelganger, he also can't use the, uh, the Phantom Rush. So run around. All his mobility is just totally locked down. It's going to be just a little bit longer, guys, as quick technical issues. What are you thinking about the uh, ogre pickup? Hmm. Puppies, Puppies picked it once before. Rack. I, th I thought we were, again, we talked about it in this group today. I thought we were getting greedier with our supports. I thought we were going to go the other direction. Not, uh, not pick these one-hit wonder supports you're just going to do. I think with how greedy the cores are, it's okay. With how greedy the cores are, it's okay. Plus, like, Bloodless is... I mean, Bloodless is never bad. Yeah. You're never feeling bad about having level 7 Bloodless. What did they have when uh, the last time they drafted over? Because I felt like um, it added a frontliner that they kind of needed. But here in this game, like Mars, Lone Druid, Morphling, the, these are not heroes that need a frontliner. In fact, uh, they, they provide a lot of tankiness. That was the game where I think Yapsor was, or uh, CM. Yeah. So, we're actually top of my head. I stumped William. I'm usually such a good memory with this stuff. Yeah, that's, I know. That's such garbage. I can't remember who he is above us. It had to have been some hero like Troll, right? Ooh, shout out to, uh, Shout out to several people who got back to me. But, uh, shout out in particular to Nomad, who uh, I was wondering what the interaction was with the triple adaptive strike. Obviously, we couldn't really test it out. Yeah. Uh, it actually does hit uh, both heroes twice. Oh, okay. So you go from, you know, before you get the level 25 talent on Morphling, you're just talking about a double shotgun blast. That's a quad blast right there. See, this is what I love about being in the UK crowds. You know how to keep things entertaining. You know how to keep themselves entertained anyway. Yeah, I'm chill. I'm just letting you guys do stuff. Getting word, it should only be a couple more. <laughs> you know, guys, the other sponsors are going to get jealous. Are they chanting DHL? Yes. <laughs> like always, man. <laughs> uh. 
crazy. How you been feeling about the the tournament as a whole so far? It's been good. Yeah. It's uh, everyone was really nice. You remember? You know, I was like, I remember at TI where uh, everyone would always tell me I was like their eighth favorite caster. <laughs> at least people here like lie better. <laughs> true. True. They always do, uh, like, second favorite, so it seems like kind of plausible, like, oh, of course, there's someone ahead of me, but at least yeah, they're yeah. my second favorite. <laughs> I've got imposter syndrome big time, so anybody, anytime they tell me I'm, like, their eighth favorite, I'm like, at least I'm up there. I made top ten, baby. I was like, who's behind me? Like, Kyle? Like, I'll take that. Uh, so do you know what any of the, the Korean lines are for the chat well? Um... I know Roshan, Roshan, Roshan. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for the interpretation on that one, William. <laughs> Dude, my Korean's garbage. All the other, uh, what is it? We, had, we used to have like the three Korean coaches at once. It was like me, Heen, and Sunbi. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I know it's terrible. Because you can instantly tell that I'm not from Korea. Like when you talk to other Koreans, they're just like... They oh, always know instantly. They know. It's not even close. I mean, when we lived in Korea for Zephyr, Aosin, I think, ended up speaking it better than I did. He learned how to read the language and everything. And you just learned nothing during... How long were you there? We were there for a year. Purge came in, I want to say, just right after Christmas and New Year's. Mm. My boy Purge Gamers. Or no, he came before Christmas. That was a good Christmas present. It was a Christmas miracle. Yeah, shout out to Purge. You guys always go wild for him. It's really cool. Weatherman Purge. I know you appreciate it. It doesn't, it, it doesn't matter where we are in the world. The reaction when we see Weatherman Purge is always the same. And then you were in Germany for how many years? Two? Two years, yeah. You learned zero German. Nope. I know that. All right, guys, we've gone from one small issue to another. Now we have a sound issue that should be clearing up here quickly. And we'll get back into our, uh, our hype series, which honestly was not the hypest game one just because Secret shut out OG so hard. Like, as soon as the, like, OG went for the second time around, they tried to push a tower and just uh, utterly denied. You could be, kind of feel where it was going. Yeah, like, I think oh, this, this game is just going to get hard. Is a lot better. That was nice. You so. think this game is harder? Oh, I think this. Oh, we're getting back into the game. Nice. Nice. All right. Game two, OG versus Secret is underway, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get back into it. Right away, we're going to have a little bit of action here. The Inkswell, normally momentarily stunning here on Seb. He actually has not leveled anything just yet. Just in case he does need the Burrow Strike, he pops it now, but does actually stun up Puppy. He thought about it, but you would yeah, die. You would definitely die. Level one stun is not as good as you think it's going to be. Yeah. That means he now doesn't have Sandstorm for this laning yeah. phase, which is kind of what he needs. So hopefully he'll, he'll, uh, he'll get the levels. I'll say the big difference in last game and this game yeah. is they, do, they don't have to use these like high cooldown ultis to commit to fights. Because in the, in the previous game, they didn't really have the best disables without having these like 90 second cooldown ultis uh, being committed. This time around, they've got the playmakers. Yeah, they've just got like, you know, Blink Burrow at any point in time, you can start a fight very casually. Jerex, who can go in, you have Chen Creeps, you have things that can actually do stuff this time around. Last, last game, I, those, those lineups you can execute, don't get me wrong, but it means that you can't really, there's no room for error. Of course in Dota, like, there's error everywhere. What are the big advantages from Chen? We kind of talked about, like, uh, last game, how OG needed to switch it up a little bit, maybe try and force Secret up to top lane before going bottom. Oh. Nice pick up on the Courier by Puppy. That's really gonna hurt that mid matchup. Zai, I mean, he's poking. Trying to do some work. Puppy. Yeah, all right, trying to time people are trying to get it out oh. of the inkswell. Still managed to get hit there. 
Stab. Just gonna uh, reset a little bit. Nice. As the creep wave was pulled over. Finally give them some XP in this top lane. Honestly, more having an okay time, but Sand King isn't doing that bad. It's the double stout shield. Plus, uh, double stout shield plus bulwark. Mm. He takes a very different approach to many of the other Marses we've seen who go 3-2-0 in their laning phase. You get bulwark afterwards. He's just all about the tankiness here. Fortunately, he's got to head back to base. Our mid lane matchup, the Troll 18-2 compared to the 16-1 of the Lone Druid. So it seems to be going pretty even. This top lane, though, is going despite the fact that they're uh, straight up tri laning. Should they try dual laning now? I don't know, because Seb's still level 3. Like, it's not like his XP's been. Nice two man Earl, much. but they're going to be able to get on top of Jarex here with the Inkswell popping. Jarex turns around, tries to get some damage on the apps, or he does some, but still gives up the first blood. He might just pop Mango and go, but it's better of it. And that death only happens because they got aggressive. Yeah. They were fine otherwise in this lane, I think. Yeah, they're doing pretty well for themselves. And when it came to pure levels, I was behind. Oh, pulling in Jarex. Hoping that he would be able to get the shackles on his eye. Maybe they can get an early kill. But he's got double stout shield. Now he's got uh, a ring of protection. Because he knows all the damage that's flowing at him. At least before the Shadow Shaman was here. It, it was all physical. But Sebs, apparently they feel like he's got the levels that he'll be okay for now. Level four with two levels of burrow strike. That's enough to get away from the ink swell and then get a little sandstorm now. It's mid matchup going decently in favor of Thompson right now. Troll's probably one of the few heroes that doesn't care that much about the lone root there. You have high armor, you have the missed percentage chance, obviously, when you whirling axes. My friends coming in, hopping in with the double damage. His eyes not able to secure those bounty runes. That should be, uh... Oh, that's only two for two. Puppy is hanging around mid right now. Make the long trek all the way around as... I mean... Ganking with Ignite, I'm not sure how powerful that's gonna be. Maybe he's just... Just gonna try and get Vision down. Wonder why he feels it's so important to get vision on this Radiant bottom half of the map. Uh, probably to see the Chen rotation. I'd imagine uh, if they try to smoke into the jungle, for example. Yeah. They probably won't be that careful when you get onto the low ground, which is why I also think he smoked himself, so they're unaware of where the vision could be. Could be that big wrap around behind the lone druid. Staying pretty calm top lane. Sand King gets very, very low, but uh, oh, he doesn't want to. Uh, that last stroke of fate. At some point, he's going to have to poke his head out and burst strike away. May not even be able to stick it out for the creep wave. And he doesn't have a shrine available either. Yapsor is not actually sure where he went to. Look at this, Jerex. Fear goes out, but oh. they don't get any damage on him. So Chen is able to pull him away to safety. Well played by Jerex. Just a slight misstep there from Sai. He just could have, could have gotten any damage whatsoever. Still only level three right now is Jerex. Oh, trying to get him with the spear actually misses, and Jerex holds the shackles on to Sai. Ensuring the kill there. Yapsor and Puppy both made their way down here to try and stop this Chen push, but not their core of Mars. He is going to be up in just one second's time, so we'll still have a, a potential for a three versus three. Not too much damage has been done to the tower just yet. Finally going to hit level four, but still not having the best of times right now on this Mars. I and mean, the team fight ability of this hero is still very good. Obviously, can catch up quite nicely, but they're going to turn it to the Marfling. They managed to get him before he can go into more strength, but is it going to be enough? It's not. He waveforms a slight distance. Not sure where that was headed. That was so short. It's going to be very difficult for, for them to kill the Morphling after he's already... I think it's more just about the harass, though. Yeah. Keep him in check right now. I'm going to go for it again, and... 
Seb does have the stun, but doesn't think it'll lead to anything, and he would be absolutely correct. Oh, bottom that's lane twice. gets him, does. Zai ends up falling. The two supports couldn't really do anything in time. The Inkswell is going to go off onto the uh, Phantom Lancer to here. They do have the Phantom to brace on the real one. It's going to go back to him. Yeah, he's dead. Around. Just kills him. Anna thought that he was powerful enough to fight in a two versus one after killing Zai, but not the case at all. And Courier once again being sniped out. Best situation for uh, OG. Two to two. Still, I think, the lead. Just because their other two cores are still getting pretty good farm. Plus, the Sand King's got near the Morphling CS. As soon as the supports left this lane, Seb feels fine. Dyer's top tower is under attack. How is it that, like, OG is still drafted kind of greedy, I would say, with uh, having Troll and Phantom Monster on the same team? Yeah. What, what's the difference here between game one and game two against uh, a lone druid? Why aren't they just getting run over again? Uh, OG? Because yeah. I think they have a Sand King, which... It serves, like, sort of a similar purpose to the Tidehunter, in the sense that, like, you can't really shut this hero out. He's... That's the best part about him as a hero, like, you see this Mars, he's level four, he can't yeah. really get anything, he's got 15 CS, he's not gonna be active on the map. Whereas... No tail might go down here. Real low here. He's gonna get speared back. back. To the tree. He doesn't actually pin him, but it'll still be enough distance. Bazai may still be run down here. Good stroke of fade out from Yapsor, who's got that at level three now. But yeah, the Sand King. That'll make the big difference for them. Yeah, we did say he was probably one of the best tower defenders with it. Oh, Anna! If he got, if he gets pinned there, he's dead. Yeah, hundred percent. Because then the Phantom lands on him. He's gonna be silenced, even if uh, he is able. To live long enough through the stun. Jarek's showing up now, trying to turn, but Yapsor, he sees this as an opportunity. They're all so tanky, they can just kind of run at these heroes, and the spear does successfully land on the Phantom Lancer with a stroke fade onto Anna. He's already taken so much damage, he's gonna try and oh, run nice. away with Phantom Rush. Really good use of that one. Yapsor will be dying as Chen makes his way over here. Anna survives. 10 minute bounty runes are coming up. The spear! Anna! How did you just try and do that right in front of Sai? I... A double kill for him, but he's probably gonna fall as the centaur stun will make sure that No Tail gets a double kill in return. That was beyond greedy. That was maybe the greediest thing I've seen at this tournament. It's daytime, you're uh... on the low ground. They just go up to the high ground. But even then, they had a ward there. Like, yeah. just, just, just run away. Just run. Just run. I mean, Zai's game was pretty miserable, and now it's like sort of okay because of that. Yeah, absolutely. And your game will start changing even more as he gets his level six. He had such a nice move too. Where that Phantom Rush onto the neutral creep getting him away, but he thought like, oh, it was nighttime at the time. Maybe I'll be able to sneak it in. Not the case here. The Chen was the recipient of that double kill. Would be a nice pickup, but unable to do so. And they do have a good counter to that Inkswell, but there is going to be the arena laid out while they finish up the Ogre Magi. Yes, the two supports are stuck here as Nisha makes his rotation over, and they're going to be able to catch Anna as well, it seems. They got a successful spear back yeah, underneath this Gen 1 tower area. What a great combo there. Just kind of baiting OG in and then trapping them with the arena. So Nisha has plenty of time to bring down all three OG heroes. Now he's just died twice in a row after having more or less free farm. I mean, his support's hard dedicated to helping his game out. He was untouched. Zai's game was pretty much ruined. Is they're gonna make the go onto him? Epicenter with the lasso following up. Zai is definitely gonna be dying here, uh, but Sev's kind of stuck as well. They do have the surfing wards on top of Midwan, who's in range form right now. So he's Mid at with a first strike. They might be able to finish him off. They in fact they will. Now the jump board from Anna as well to try and finish up this uh, grim stroke. Yapsor gets the explosion onto Jerex, trying to get No Tail as well. And fortunately, No Tail sidesteps that, but the urn it. We'll take him out. Yeah. Just a greedy TP from mid one. He TP'd into the middle of all the wards. Yeah. Uh, didn't cancel it even after his Mars had died. And it just sort of pinned him down. Everyone's being so greedy. I'm, I'm not entirely sure why. Tome given to the uh, Phantom Lancer.
I think that might have been uh, No Tail, because the, there's no doubt for me that Jarex, like, he takes the tome every single time. So it's probably No Tails. He's like, I've already got my level six. Do I really need more levels? Better that our core has a better game. I think this is how OG want to play Dota in general. Give Seb a playmaker, uh, and then pick this like greedier one-two combo. Because you do have a very good one-two combo in uh, Tops and the Nana. Yep. High mechanical skill. Because they play so YOLO, they need items. They are not uh, under-farmed, under-leveled sort of fighters. No. They certainly need to have an advantage over the enemy. That way they can do the 1v2, 1v3 plays. Yeah. Like, Anna for me, he loves doing that, right? The go in when you probably shouldn't and somehow sort of just like bail yourself out. I mean, we saw Thompson playing that Monkey King last game. He was always jumping into fights that turns out he was not strong enough to take. This time, though, much uh, much cleaner game overall for OG. They are down 8 to 10, but I mean, considering what last game looked like, they actually took a tower like pre 15 yeah. minutes this time around without getting completely team wiped for it. Still, advantage, I'd say. Minor advantage yeah, for Secret is center, trying to go for the fast kill on the puppy and then push that mid tier one tower. But you can see Secret are going to respond here with the soul find Phantom and Brace onto the two of them. They're going to try and get the double adaptive strike with the double pro strike actually from mid one. Really beautiful play that actually stuns up Thompson as well, gets them stuck inside the arena as a result. And now they're just going to run down heroes as the bear chasing No Tail away. They're not going to go for Anna, but they will take the free captain of OG. And they can turn around and finish up that tier one tower. At that was their so leisure. Well done. Nisha owns sick. that fight. So sick. I was just thinking double adaptive strike, but he was like, nah, we're a strike. Stun them both. And they're gonna get the mid tower for that. And it's that sort of like, I don't know how best to describe it, like passive aggressive. They let you try to come in. Yeah. OG's thinking to themselves, well, grab a tier one tower after this kill. The mid tower is very important, and instead, Secret just there half a beat sooner. I mean, they, they very clearly had a, a setup in mind with Yapsor sitting in the trees there, and I'm sure Puppy was just yelling at his team like, they just committed a heavy blink epicenter on an ogre. Like, what do I care about this? You guys should definitely fight them right now. As long as you can catch them, as long as you can stall them up long enough for Nisha to complete his TP, it's going to be a free win, and sure enough, it was. Nisha was so quick about that. Yeah. Losing four there and their mid tower. And they really wanted to try to utilize those shaman wards early on to take towers. And instead, they've only taken one safe lane tower so far. I noticed this about Secret in like the previous patch that they were one of those teams that was willing to like mass rotate to defend their safe lane tower. They, they seem to have become at least in this tournament anyway, the best tower defenders. Oh yeah, for sure. They're very quick about it. And it's really, what they're really good about is like sending heroes that are supposed to be in front, in front. Yeah. Like Ogre dies there, sure, but he'll just buy back. It costs him 200 gold. He can reset the fight for himself. You want to get through a Tidehunter to get our tower? he Ravage you and we'll all TP in. Right. How do you defeat that style of Dota? Uh, I think there are ways you either match up better against them, like core to core, or you pick a lineup that can punish them and try to push the pace as fast as you possibly can. Yeah. And all of these things are, again, easier said than done, as they've been utilizing this throughout the season. And Would really... I be correct in saying, like, game one was an example of trying to take a faster pace, yeah. and game two is matching cores? Yes. Precisely. I think that OG realized their style last game was just... Oh, Seb! He's gonna try and help out Jarex here as he was being pulled away by the Chen, just had to prevent any damage coming. It was gonna, they are gonna be able to, uh, well, not really go for Nisha. It's, it's got two health bars. Pretty hard to beat that. Once again, that mid tower is defended. But yeah, I think last game, they were trying to just, like, punish the greed. I mean, there was so much greed on that team. And this time around, they were like, well, those kinds of all-in lineups, they're not very fun to play when you don't have a dominant laning phase. Like, when you can't just roll them, 
take all the tier one towers. So OG probably figures they need better ways to just hit towers in general. And they just needed more of a mid game play style where they weren't so reliant on ultis for damage. But they're in a different position now where they're just item dependent, so they need a farm. Yeah. It's like uh, that, that mid tier one tower going down. Like, they want to take Secret's mid tower, but they don't necessarily have to, like last game, right? Yeah. Because they have this scaling troll and Phantom Lancer. I mean, they clearly think that six slot for six slot, maybe their PL just wins out. With uh, with his defusal, he'll burn out the Morph's mana. Obviously, it's not as important as it used to be, but it's still pretty annoying for Morph not to be able to make plays. Stab gets ported down here. Yeah, let the uh, the former coach now offlaner farm up that bottom lane, but the pick off in top lane, that's gonna hurt a lot. The Phantom Lancer, who Anna, who was farming so well, he had a Diffuser Blade, he was uh, getting close to a Manta, but now that it's been shut down for 40 seconds, they get him, and in return, OG look at bottom lane, try and get aggressive. They run into mid one, but they can't actually fight him. Not with uh, just a Sand King and a Chen, anyway. It seems like Thompson can't really fight Nisha either. It's any time that uh, the troll <laughs> tries to turn around and fight the Morphling, Nisha just turns into a troll himself. Now Waveform with the Inkswell pick off on No Tail. Secret, they're beginning to snowball things here. They've already got a 6,000 net worth lead. Pick off after pick off is happening. Without the Manta, it's so easy for them to just continuously punish this PL. Yeah. So they're going to need just a bit of time. Meanwhile, uh, Zai has made a pretty complete comeback here, I would say. Phase Boot, Soul Ring, and Blink Dagger by 20 minutes. Oh, and man. another successful spear on Anna. The Chen heal wasn't even close to saving the carry of this OG. Is, it feels like whenever Anna steps out, he just dies. Yeah. This is starting to get real rough, and they might even just go into Roshan. Nisha could do it real quick. And he was probably expecting them to head up to top lane, right? Uh, yeah. So he thinks to himself, oh, I'll be able to farm up in. Now Thompson's gonna get caught as well. This three-man death squad from Secret, just Zai, Puppy, and Yapsor is just doing way too much work right now. And with the DD morph, just gonna walk in Seb. It's gonna get spotted here. And they watched the last game. Unlucky for OG, but Secret saw. Yeah, they're gonna make sure there's no afterlife shenanigans here. No Saint King to steal away this Aegis. And they will get it very peacefully. 20 minute mark, Aegis on this morph, 7k up. They just can't afford to lose Anna again. He really needs to recover his game. Just keep the urn on him. They get one good stroke of fate. Seb might go down and reveals himself as he pops the magic wand. Does get hit by the stroke. And the last couple of ticks of the year, not quite enough, is the Tranquil Boots started kicking in. Now he's going to be able to stop the Grim Stroke from teeping away. And they've got the chain disables here to make sure he doesn't cast any more spells. Seb is going to take some damage, though. Fire Blast as well as the Ignite is enough. Trading out three position for the four position. They are behind, I guess. So maybe OG isn't that sad about it. Yeah, it kind of evens out in gold, honestly. Yeah. Nisha just is never really afraid of that troll. At least not now. Maybe a little bit later. Another great spear into the tier one tower. Zai showing the proficiency of this blink dagger. Now gonna throw down the arena to make sure Thompson can't go anywhere. He does manage to get off the battle trance. But it's just delaying the inevitable at this point. Zai's been so beastly with this Mars post laning phase. Yeah. Him and the two supports have just been running around killing cores nonstop. Wherever Thompson and Anna show up, they're instantly there. Anna's hiding in this tree line. I just get spotted here. Don't yeah, I'm know. Not, I'm not sure what he's going to do gonna double with down. this. Zai knows which one is real. Actually blinking over, thinking it's. Uh... That illusion was going to be an opportunity. The Sand King inside the Sandstorm now going to be forced out of it. Somebody finish him off. That'll be Zai. And he actually guessed wrong. But they're still going to grab the tower as a result of this E-Blade fully complete on this Morphling. The timing might just be too fast here. Seb buys back. He does have the ulti. 
Lone Druid oh, is chopping so down towers so quickly. Do you manage to get the soul bind? Not the double phantoms embrace, but oh, a double spear! A stroke and a spear, that's all it takes to explode OG, as well as the melee barracks, apparently. Nisha drops a little bit though, but now the fire blast onto the troll. He's been ensnared up, he pops the mantis, trying to get away. He doesn't have battle trance. The arena goes down, finishing off the troll, bouncing Jerex into the wall. He's gonna die as well. They're just going Secret are just diving in. No Tail's gonna get shotgun down. And Anna, well, he's last left alive, but now he's been fire blasted. Silence up does manage to get a doppelganger back inside the fountain. Secret do need to be a little bit careful here and not try and overextend themselves too much into the fountain. They're all alive. They're all gonna heal up, and now they're gonna focus on a second lane of barracks. They did so well for themselves around that 15 minute marker. There's, there was no tier two left in that bottom lane. Another jump forward, another pick off. This Jerex. happens in a hurry, and it all just comes down to this three-man roaming squad. They've made They're so much space. They're just going for it. Yeah, there's no spells up. Seb does have his ulti, but... I mean, it said Nisha had a, uh, was an E-Blade like six minutes faster than normal or something. And, and it's definitely catching OG by surprise as Thompson. TP's in aggressively here. A lot of them are low on health or low on mana for Team Secret, so at least OG will be able to hold here, but losing two lanes of barracks as well as a tier four before the 25 minute marker, 20,000 net worth lead for Team Secret. So I was wrong. This game is uh, much worse than the last one. Yeah, it really is. It got, it got worse in a hurry. Yes. That win percentage so went from pretty much even. It was actually an OG's favorite. For a while. I mean, I thought it was fine until... Uh, slightly secret. It was when they just started losing core after core after core. It felt like everyone went on permanent tilt mode. Yeah. Saw when Anna died at bottom. Then he runs back bottom again, dies again. They catch him mid twice. They catch him top. Uh, just this three-man group. Thompson tries to take down the mid tower by himself. He gets caught twice. He gets pinned to the walls. Now he's got a Crimson Guard. Meanwhile, Seb is still working on that Yules. My friend, this is bouncing. Gotta be a bit disconcerting for OG. They just lost control of the game so quickly in an elimination game at that as they had already lost the first game against Team Secret. And now there's an AC complete too. And it does have the Manta now, but. Radiant are scanning. Be too little too late. And this is exactly why Secret is so feared. This this season of DPC, man, Team Secret has been getting crazy good. I mean, you look at their lineups and you're like, how do we punish this? Yeah. There should be a way to make this happen as Anna. How do they always get this great to work for them? They know. Doppelganger he does manage to spear an illusion instead of the actual real PL, but it doesn't matter. He can't get out of the arena. Secret will find the real one eventually. Yeah, three and six this game. They've just hunted him down relentlessly, and this is going to be where they go for it right now. Is uh, there are outer towers available, which will reset the glyph for themselves. Yeah, they still have it up, but it's tier one, tier two, and the shrine up there. There's also going to be Roshan. That's uh, something that. Team Secret could chill out and wait for if they really wanted to. The Burrow Strike out from Seb, leading things off, and a blink away. But maybe he didn't blink far enough away as the Ogre managed to get on top of him. Yule Scepter to be able to get rid of that silence of the Phantom's Embrace. Dodging the Inks well as well. Jarex just making sure that everybody does get out successfully. And the three from Secret, I mean, they're just kind of roving together. A lot of synergy there, too. All their other two cores are just hitting the base. Take the tier two tower. I mean, feasibly, you can just take all these shrines and go for the Roshan. There's no real rush for them as the mid tower finally does fall. Jarex committed the ultimate for that. It's eyes on the hunt right now, but we'll just TP out. Satanic. For Nisha. I guess he feels like he can't really get locked down. Oh, great soul fight. He's going to be able to lock the two of them together. Seb is stuck on top of the cliff right now when Nisha says hello with a bro strike of his own. No tail. Going to be chased down by Zai, who just goes ahead and throws out the arena because why not? They've already picked up the important heroes in Sand King and Troll. Wasn't the score really close at one point? 
Yes. Now it's 11 to 31. Secret's averaging like more than a kill a minute. Team Secret never get too far ahead of themselves. They back up, regroup. And I'm just gonna hit this tower as Nisha has his own little sandstorm. Except 10 seconds left on him, but this should be Megas. It's gonna happen so quickly. No G, I mean they want to see an ESO one Birmingham, but <laughs> against Megas this early on, I just don't know how they're gonna be able to do so. Anna, Darts are running out, they need to be able to catch something here, they're gonna go for mid one, but they are instead only getting the bear until the Burrow strike on through, they also have that leash out from Jarrett for a while, but mid one is gonna be able to get away with it, in part thanks to the Inkswell, now they're just beating down the real Anna, Nisha always seems to be fine, the real one, and now the spear onto the troll, locking him inside of the trees, he's dead with no buyback, Anna can buy back if they want to, and fight for the throne to the bitter end, but Team Secret, he took a tier four, what was it, like 18, 20 minutes or something? Yeah. They're gonna finish off the other one, go for the throne, and OG just like that, they are eliminated. This was a team that, again, was building up momentum, but in this series, it was all secret, all day. Like, that was the closest thing to a shutout that we're gonna see today, I think. That, uh, I mean, that series, the actual game time was maybe like an hour and like three minutes. Yeah. That was... And like 40 minutes of the total game time felt like, oh, it's like Secret of already. I estimate the probability of winning to be above 99%.